Ladies and gentlemen, all rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Chapri Viapugwa presiding. Thank you, Captain Hardy. Um, I'd like to invite Juliana Banuelos up here, please, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. We're going to turn around and face the flag over here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Have a seat, please. Hello. It's deja vu. Oh, weren't we just here? Um, uh, welcome, everybody. In particular, welcome to Judge Gonzalez's family and friends. Before we get started, I am going to introduce our bench and some dignitaries that are here. Please save your applause until the end. First, the bench, and I'm going to start in the very back row and go from my left to right all the way down. So we are going to start with Judge Carter Hawley, Judge Seth Coit, Judge Rick Mallett, Judge Patrick Smalling, Judge Ron Northrup, Commissioner Jonathan Patarsi, Judge Tony Agbiani, retired Judge Dave Warner, retired Judge Les Holland, our um, pirate Judge Rob Waters, <laughs> resident comedian, our senior Judge Bernie Garber, Judge Aaron Guy Castillo, Commissioner Cheryl McCann, Commissioner Tamine Marvini, Judge Rick Fabianos, Commissioner Mike Rasmussen has found some friends, retired Judge Bill Johnson, Judge Dick Giuliani, Judge Christine Eagle, Judge John Soldati, Judge George Abdallah, Judge Tony Lucaccini, Judge Barbara Cronlin, Judge Elizabeth Humphrey. Up here in the witness box is our executive committee, Judge Michael Mulvihall, Judge Linda Loftus, Judge Jane Lee, Judge Lauren Thomason, our assistant presiding judge starting January of 2022, Judge Gus Pereira, Judge Jose Alba, and Judge Robin Apple. Of course, we're all here for Judge Blanca Bonbellos, and I am Judge <laughs> Supervisor Rickman, Chris Rupay um, on behalf of Miguel Via Pudua, 
We have the treasury tax collector, Fonsi Kyokum, um, Captain Art Hardy, Lieutenant Rudy Lovato. We have public defender, Miriam Lyle. We have district attorney, Tori Berber Salazar is here. And we have Ed Martell, the chief Montezuma fire district and Jay Wolverdine, the county administrator, as well as the court's chief executive officer, Mr. Brandon Riley and our assistant Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Stephanie Bohr is here. So welcome to the Dignity. <laughs> Again, as I said, it's my pleasure to welcome the friends and families of Judge Bonnie Wallace. Um, this is her public investiture, and um, we are all uh, very happy to be having this event and very happy to see all of you, friends and family here. Um, Judge Von Wallows uh, hails from Samuakin County. She was born and educated here. She is a Franklin High Yellow Jacket. Um, and after that, she went on to uh, UCLA to get her undergraduate degree and then to Loyola Law School. Um, Judge Von Wallows returned to Stockton um, to work at the California Rural Legal Assistance, or CRLA. Attorneys who work for CRLA are do doing what I say, um, God's work. They are not doing it for the glamor or the excitement of being a trial attorney or Lord knows the money. <laughs> they are helping people who no one else really wants to help. The disenfranchised, the poor, the farm laborers who help put food on our table. They are paid low wages for backbreaking work and it's lawyers like Blanca Banuelos who make sure they receive a living wage they have suitable housing. They have proper breaks when picking in 105 degree heat. Um, she fought against rampant sexual harassment of the female um, work laborers. Um, Governor Newsom and his staff appointed a great warrior. She has spent her legal career helping others with no expectation of a big payoff or that big end of the year bonus. She's whip smart, hilarious, a quick learner, as evidenced by her assignment in um, juvenile delinquency, which she had never practiced and knew nothing about. And um, I'm happy to say she's shining there. I'm proud to call her my Latina sister in robes. Um, Blanca is only the fourth Latina ever appointed to our bench. And um, it's, it's, it's a great start. Her smile is infectious. And last but not least, she is a proud member of the House of Ravenclaw. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we are going to start out with some comments from our um, district attorney, Ms. Tori Berber Salazar. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Congratulations and welcome to the San Joaquin County Superior Court. I've had the privilege and honor of appearing in across the United States in different Superior Courts, district attorney's offices. And I can tell you there is no better than here in San Joaquin County. It is an amazing group of individuals that work to seek justice every day. They come in hardworking, dedicated, open-minded, and in pursuit of what is right and what is just. They too, as you are, and your resume is so impressive, are warriors for justice. We're the guardians of the Constitution. We are the difference between democracy and not. It is an amazing opportunity to be a Superior Court judge, but I think it's the greatest honor to be a Superior Court Judge of San Joaquin County. So on behalf of everybody in the District Attorney's Office and all the great 780,000 people I get to represent, we say welcome, thank you for your service, thank you for your passion and commitment to this community. We wish you all the best on your journey and we're grateful to have you. Thank you. And then I'd like to ask um, Miriam Lyle, the public defender, to make some comments. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the Public Defender's Office, I too want to welcome you to the bench. Uh, from the number of attendants here, the justices, and uh, friends, family, and hardworking court staff, this is a really tribute to you. And I'm so pleased to be part of the ceremonial investiture. Um, I think it's important. The advantage of today is that we have had the opportunity to see you in action for the last year and three quarters. And I knew based on your back, your own background, your background in CRLA, that you would definitely 
uphold the Constitution, the rights. It doesn't matter if you're poor, wealthy, uh, doesn't matter your race, that everybody gets an equal day in court. Uh, I had the um, honor of seeing the uh, Scalia Ginsburg um, One Act Opera last weekend, and it was really fun if anyone has the opportunity. Um, but what I was impressed by is obviously we know that Scalia and Ginsburg were diametrically opposite in terms of their own beliefs, their um, way that they approach the Constitution, but they really both had such a deep-seated, deep-seated rooted belief in the Constitution about it, your own opinions don't matter, your own background doesn't matter, what matters is that the constitutional principles are upheld. And I know um, that that is something that we will get in you. So mazel tov, congratulations. Um, I'm really looking forward to hearing your speech today and learning a little bit more about you. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, so I kind of around. Right. All right, so uh, let me tell you guys a little story, all right? So I wake up one morning, I open up the newspaper, I'm reading the paper, and I go to maybe three or four pages in, and I see an article you hardly ever see in the paper. It's an article about a, a, a court case that was an important court case, and it made it into the record. And I start reading it, and I go to the next page, and I see the attorney that won the case was Blanca Banuelos. And so I had never heard of her name, and I didn't know who she was, and, and this tells you a little bit about me. I think that I know anybody who's anybody in this county, <laughs> but I didn't know her. And so the name stuck in my head. So maybe, maybe two months later, I did assign to a committee, and I go to this committee, and she's the chairman of the committee. It's the civil procedure section of the of the uh, bar. And I'm I'm sit there and I meet her and I finally put name and person together. And we run a meeting and we had a few things that had to get done. And by the end of the day, she had it all done. She sent us all emails, everything was done. And I'm like, wow, this woman is sharp. She's on the ball. Next meeting, same thing. And I'm starting to think, okay, but I, I gotta I gotta meet this person. I gotta find out who she is. I gotta find out who she is and what something, know something about her. So I asked her to lunch. So she goes, sure, let's go to lunch. So I said, okay, pull out your calendar. So we pull out our iPhones and we're looking, and I see a, a day in Friday that I'm available. And I really was available every day. I'm not that busy. So <laughs> I see a Friday and I go, hey, how about that Friday? And she goes, I can't go that Friday. I'm I gotta go to North Carolina. I, North Carolina, do you have family in North Carolina? I didn't know there was any Mexicans in North Carolina. <laughs> she said, no, no, it's for work. I'm, I'm actually a, a featured speaker. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. So I said, grab the calendar. So we go to the next, or two, three Fridays down. I go, how about that Friday? Let's go to that Friday. And she said, I gotta go to New York. And I said, all right, you, uh, are you gonna go see some plays? Are you gonna go to museums? She goes, no, I'm on a panel. I'm a, a panelist on the on the legal conference. I'm like, all right, wow, okay. So I go, all right, so I'm free all the time. So I'm like, let's go a little farther out. Let's try to go farther out. And I go like a month, two months out. And I go, how about two months out? And she's going through her phone like this. She goes, That's Chicago. <laughs> Chicago? She goes, yeah, I think I have to go there give a speech. I don't really want to, but I'm doing this. Speech. And I stop and I look at her and I'm like, who are you? <laughs> and in her style, she went, who are you? <laughs> that is Blanca Baguera. Right? You guys all know that. So, a couple of fun facts. Um, her mother, uh, Judge Barrera's mother was her kindergarten teacher. Uh, most of us uh, love uh, Spider-Man or Batman or Superman. She loves Wonder Woman. Um, most of us sing in the shower. She sings in her chambers. <laughs> she thought nobody could hear her. But her <laughs> snitched her out. Um, she is, as 
uh, Judge Yakuta said a Franklin graduate. Which, there it is, Judge Bobby Hawkins. That means that on the bench, the most represented high school is Franklin High School. <laughs> South of Harding Way. South of Harding Way. South of Harding Way. Oh my God, super technical. All right. Enough, enough of the fun stuff. Um, she is a recognized expert in sexual harassment of, of women in the uh, farm worker uh, industry uh, across the country. I've, the things I've learned about her, she's amazing. And I think her perspective, last week we were here and we were talking about diversity and having a plaintiff's attorney, and then afterwards, Judge Holland reminded me that there have actually been others before, and I apologize for skipping uh, Judge Agbiani, who apparently did some plaintiff's work. But now I know that we have diversity, because we don't have the single judge who's come from the nonprofit legal side, and that is wonderful, to have somebody from that industry uh, come in and be on our bench and add that perspective. So on behalf of the San Joaquin County Bar Association and our 425 strong members, we welcome you. Uh, we look forward to, uh, I get to see you every once in a while. I've never appeared in front of you in, in June, October, but I'm hoping that one day you come to Stockton and we get to see you here. And so welcome. Thank you. I brought notes. <laughs> so let me start off by saying Happy Latino Heritage Month. Y para todos los que están aquí desde México, feliz día de la independencia. Espero hayan tenido una linda celebración. I'm going to try not to cry. That is my goal. <laughs> because it is really overwhelming to see all of you beautiful people here today. In a way, I was expecting to be overwhelmed because I knew just how many of you would make the trip from New York, Seattle and Yakima, San Jose, Madera, Los Angeles, Calipatria, from Jalisco and Guanajuato. You see, your honors, the news traveled fast and it traveled far. It first traveled across email inboxes and texts, then through phone calls, across state lines. It got translated and it crossed international borders. Governor Gavin Newsom had issued a very important press release, which read, Blanca Adela Banuelos has been appointed to a judgeship in San Joaquin County. So of course we are here to celebrate this incredible moment. But Judge Banuelos, while this appointment is undeniably and exclusively yours, the honor of this moment, that honor is ours. We feel like this moment is ours because we see ourselves in your story. And as this institution entrusts you with an authority to sit in judgment using the value shaped by your life experience, we feel seen too. Your Honor, nos estás haciendo valer. The community of legal aid lawyers who are guided by the North Star of social justice and are willing to offer the personal sacrifice the mission demands, they feel like this moment belongs to them. And that especially holds true for your colleagues and friends who work with you evenings and weekends and strategize to vindicate the rights of farm workers throughout California. The moment belongs to the farm worker community who trusted La Señorita Licenciada. It belongs to Jose Arias and his family who over 12 years never gave up as he stood by your side and watched you fight first in the state courts and then in federal court. Just as nervous as you were probably, before making the case and asserting that the value of his labor was something that must be recognized by the highest tribunals. This moment belongs to the group of men and mostly women of color lawyers who you have mentored. Thank you for opening the doors. This moment belongs to the tios and tias 
and primos from Stockton, San Jose, Jalisco, and Guanajuato, who are always present, even when they are far. Those who shaped your values of loyalty and commitment and hard work. And this moment, as has been said, belongs to the graduates of Franklin High School and belongs to Southside Stockton. It belongs to the man who reached out to you to say, hey Blanca, you may not remember me, but you are my sister's class. We're so proud of you representing the South Side. It belongs to all the people of this community who always knew and clearly understood poverty, racism, and injustice, even when we didn't have sophisticated terms like built environment, social determinants of health, industrial prison complex, and implicit bias. It is certainly a solemn moment for any person to be entrusted to uphold the law and values of a community. But in your case, the moment is expansive. It expands beyond you, beyond us, beyond this courthouse, beyond this time. It expands and holds the arc of history so that while we sit here at this time, in this space, Around us and with us are also the lives, the timelines, and the strands of history that collided and conspired to bring us here today. From where we sit in this moment, we can see a young couple in 1976. We can see the anguish and the excitement of deciding to leave their home in Mexico to come to the United States. And we can travel with them from Jalisco to California and Washington, an itinerary dictated by the seasons of the harvest. And we can see Maria with her baby girl next to her while she's working in the fields. And day after day, we can witness the fatigue and the satisfaction of being able to provide for their family here and in Mexico. From our seats here today, we might also hear the echoes of the chants or see the raised fists, the marches, and we may even feel the movement of all those people who demanded to be heard. We can hear, time's up, love is love, black lives matter, si se puede. And among the masses of those movements, Judge Manuelos, you might even see the heroes who dreamed of a promised land for us more beautiful than the one we could imagine. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, we miss you. Cruz Reynoso, we paved the way. And when we close our eyes, we can also feel those who knew our hearts because they molded us. Rich Oliver, is that present? Blanca, your father Cuco, we sit here surrounded by the past and the present, the choices, the courage, the joy, disappointment, and hope that fill today. And together, we bring all of our focus to the one person who is at the center of this moment. Judge Manuelos, the journey, the grit, the tenacity, the determination are undeniably and exclusively yours. And if I may please the court, your honors, your colleague, my friend, she is fierce, she is honest, she is direct, and she is fearless about hard truths. I hope you will see that as a gift. Judge Banuelos, thank you for bringing us here today and for reminding us that systems of justice, just like this moment, can expand and make room to hold us all. Do solemnly swear. 
do solemnly swear that I will support and defend that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well, and that I will well, and faithfully discharge, and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter, the duties of which I'm about. Say that again. <laughs> the duties of which I'm about to enter. The duties of which I'm. You gotta break that up. <laughs> the duties upon which. Upon which I'm about. I am about to enter. <laughs> taught me that if you work hard, respect others, 
and, and, and remain humble, you will be rewarded in your personal life and professionally. So I always try to do that. My mom, one of the strongest women I know, always instilled in me that education was important and could open a lot of doors for me. I remember one summer, uh, when I was in high school, my mom uh, sent me and my brother then to work in the fields. Um, and um, we were both teenagers. He's three years younger than me. So now I keep thinking, I wonder if it was even legal. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, my dad, dad had a friend who was a foreman. And so that's who we worked for. Um, and we picked bell peppers that summer. It was a, a great community of workers. We made each other laugh. We were being paid $4.25 an hour. Um, and I still remember, for some reason, some guy sneezed. The way he sneezed was very um, different. I don't know why that sticks in my head. <laughs> Farm work uh, is admirable work. These are the workers that plant and pick the food we all eat. But that work just was not for me. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do. Mamá, siempre trabajaste y luchaste para que pudiéramos sobresalir. Te lo agradezco mucho. Mil gracias por tu apoyo constantemente. Sin fin no estaría aquí hoy. Te quiero de aquí a la luna. Y aunque somos muy parecidas y peleoneras, te quiero mucho. We last, lost my dad in 2012. My dad was a farm worker his entire life until the day of his death. I believe he's proud of me and what I've accomplished. If he were here today, though, I keep thinking he probably would have walked out by now because <laughs> he would have been like, this is too much fuss. <laughs> Why <is that> <laughs> um, he always kept it real. I remember having conversations with him at his house about the work I was doing at CRLA. And he would um, remind me that I needed to, to really think about the approach I, I, I took as a lawyer. He thought, because you're in a courtroom, you don't really know what happens to us in the fields. You may decide to come and inspect the fields, but as soon as you leave, that impacts how they treat us. Um, so he always kept it real, grounded me. Um, and um, my dad was also lucky to have, you know, um, later in life, his, his wife, Rebecca. También te agradezco a ti, Rebecca, porque siempre me apoyaste y me trataste como una hija. I also have a ride or die crew. Um, Anel, Maria, Juan, and Yahida, all UCLA grads, go Bruins. <laughs> um, if I do the math right, it's probably been about at least 20 years since we met. Thank you for being my friends and having my back. Hanging out with you all has kept me sane. I'm thankful to have you in my life. And especially uh, thankful for all the time we get to spend together when we travel. Um, I look forward to our future adventures. What to say about Armando? He remembers it completely different than the way I remember. <laughs> Before I met him, I didn't know much about Armando, except that he was a former DA turned criminal defense attorney who spoke Spanish. Um, before I met him, I had considered applying to become a judge, but looked at the application and it was really long. <laughs> and so I just kept setting it aside. Um, at some point in time, he called me and when we were supposed to meet for lunch, I thought he was gonna offer me a job because I knew it was a really good attorney. So I thought he was gonna offer me a job. Um, and um, I remember um, he asked me, have you considered applying to become a judge? And the rest is history. Um, thank you for getting me to finally fill out that application, um, grilling me, keeping it real. Um, you, may, you and um, other folks that helped me, um, uh, made the interviews with uh, Justice Jenkins, who I am a huge fan of, um, seem a bit easier because I think you all knew me a little bit better, so um, you have me on my toes. <clears throat> CRLA, um, I want to speak briefly about CRLA as well. That started as a two-year fellowship, which ended up being over four, 15, uh, a 15-year 15 career at CRLA. Uh, CRLA and my clients gave me the opportunity to do work that I cared about. 
I was lucky, lucky enough to represent brave workers who came forward to seek justice, not only for themselves, but for their coworkers. Sierra Lee also gave me the opportunity to work with amazing, brilliant, compassionate, and hardworking people. You don't get that everywhere. I was privileged to work with and have a workplace with predominantly women of color. That is not the norm in our, in our industry. And so I really recognize how lucky I was when I was there. I was lucky to work with and build long lasting friendships with many of my colleagues there, a lot of these women, to name a few, Monica, Sandra, Pilar, Esmeralda, Marcela. I also recognize that Sierra Lea allowed me to do work that I have, may have not been allowed to uh, do had I gone into private practice. I was able to do appellate work. I was able to go to court right away. <clears throat> I had a supervisor who believed in me and my commitment to the work. Thanks, Mike. I see you back there. I'm glad you made it. Um, I don't know. Um, I do remember when uh, I had a, a case going to appeal. I was relatively new, out maybe three or four years. And there was a call with the higher ups. They started talking about who's going to draft the appeal, who's going to argue it. And they were all saying, oh, I'll do this and I'll do that. That was just quiet. I was like, okay, sounds good. And Mike interjected and said, no, Blanca's been doing all the work. She's going to do it. I'm confident in her ability to do that. And um, so thank you for that. I, I think in other workplaces that may have not happened. <clears throat> we lost Rich Oliver in 2020, um, one of our mentors at CRLA. I remember him sitting in my office for hours, I mean hours, <laughs> uh, discussing casework and the San Francisco Giants, go Giants. <laughs> um, I called him when I was appointed. He had already left. He was retired, long retired. And um, he was really happy, so I was glad to, to, um, uh, to hear him happy over the phone and just um, be able to connect with him before he left us. <clears throat> My partner in crime at Sierra Lane was Esmeralda. I don't know if she's here. Um, oh, there she is. <laughs> um, Esmeralda Vendejas. No matter what battles we faced, I could always count on her. I don't think I've met anyone ever who's willing to put the time and commitment to the work that Esmeralda does. She was always the first person in the office and the last one. I don't think any of us in the office ever really figured out what time she got there. <laughs> Being six, maybe five, maybe four, it's like an urban legend. It will remain an unsolved mystery. <clears throat> I met Marcela at Sierra Lake when she was an intern, and I think I was a new attorney. <clears throat> After law school, she came to Sierra Lake on a fellowship and did the same thing I did, overstayed maybe our welcome. <laughs> she continues to be a voice of inspiration for all of us. I hate to follow her whenever she speaks, um, but I knew what I was getting myself into. And then she makes me cry. <laughs> She's a hard act to follow. Thanks for always being there, Amiga. <clears throat> there are many people who do not understand the value and importance of a nonprofit legal firm. We were frequently underestimated I constantly reminded our staff, let them underestimate you and then let them have it in the courtroom. Um, that was sort of my motto, right? Let people think you're not good enough. Let people think you're not smart, but prove them wrong when you're in the courtroom. <clears throat> Working at Sierra Lake gave us the luxury to focus on fighting for justice for people who many times are ignored in our justice system, especially the rule of court. I'm glad I found Sierra Lake. Finally, to my colleagues on the bench. Thanks for welcoming, welcoming me to the bench. I know some of you were surprised when I was appointed. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I will continue to do my best. I know that I bring a different and unique perspective to the bench. This is necessary. The bench is a stronger bench, the more reflective it is of the communities we serve. <clears throat> Judges and attorneys have the opportunity to use the legal system to ensure that all people from our society are treated fairly and equally, regardless of their income, their race, gender, ethnicity, sexual orientation, and or disability. I hope to do that. 
I also want to thank judicial secretaries and the staff for helping put this together. I really appreciate it. And that'll be it.